They're us. Yeah. Yeah, cause that's why you call it crucible steel. Used to make a thingy in that. But yeah. It's still from the um, smacking away. It sounds good. Do you mind if you're filming here? Can you film in here? Filming? Film. Oh, yeah, if you want. Brilliant. <coughs> Put that on. Just standing one place, don't out of the way. doing is reworking reworking some of the old Celtic knives and we run courses down at Exel Woods. Yeah. So we make uh, get everybody to come and make the, the little Celtic our our version of a Viking Celtic knife, yeah, yeah. Celtic Viking type knife. Or the Yorks the Yorkshire pattern. And so I'm just reworking them and seeing if we can draw out the blade so we can actually it'll be a usable for a kitchen knife all right yeah so actually make the kitchen knife you can't really do you know forge the blade grind it heat treat it and then get the handle on sort of the handle out do all the gluing in one day because obviously i'm charging per day and it ends up uh, getting quite expensive so if we, can, if we can create something that we can forge in one day, heat treat, polish up, and then you can take it home and then scare tomatoes with it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just trying to rework it. Just to how see. sharp do they keep then? How sharp? This is this is ten. It's EN nine they're using for the Viking knives. So that's a point. The Americans call it a 1055, you know, so it's 0.5% carbon. Whereas the other ones, these are made out of a point. So it's harder, harder it is. To, to, to the more carbon, the harder it can become. Yeah. But the easier it is to, to burn. Yeah. And the easier it is to crack. So Break if you it. hit it, you hit it, hit it too hard. Yeah. So the air 9 the lower carbon stuff, you can give it a couple of taps when it's, when it's a black heat. Yeah. You start bashing this when it's too cold. When you come to quench it, it'll break in two. So, you know, it's all. I remember coming here as a kid and they showed us all. I'm sure they had. I'm sure they had them tilt hammers working. They had what? They had. They definitely had wheel working anyway. And yeah, the wheels work, and I think the two blowers, the two um, like piston bellows, yeah, up in the roof, and they have them working. The actual trip hammers now. If you start, if you. If you got them it's working, busted. they'd fall apart. Yeah, yeah. No, but I'm sure, I'm sure when we were kids, yeah. they showed them as Going working. How long? 20 years ago? Oh, it might be more than that. But right. do, do you know, Zoom, and they had people like yourselves who were doing each particular job and they were explaining it as if they were working that job. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it was like a reenactment thing, but they really... Um, in fact, didn't you all come when it were, when it were working? Did you all come no, when it were working? working on weekends. No, nah, those those trip hammers haven't been working for ages. So no, nah, it might be thirty odd years. I mean, we could yeah, when we were what with school. What they've been probably doing is laminating steel, so they have started off with a uh, two bits of raw iron. Yeah. Um, 
and sandwiched it basically in between yeah. the uh, high carbon stuff. Yeah, you, know, you used to do and it on blade edges, didn't they? Sort of. Yeah. So if you imagine, uh, yeah, they're two bits of like cheapo steel, mm. and then you you know you you sandwich in between it a bit yeah. of decent steel, get it up to white and sparking, yeah. get it under them trip hammers, bum, 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 bum. and then when you grind back, you're grinding through the the cheaper steel, yeah. and your edge becomes the, your good yeah. steel. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, obviously good steel was hard to produce and at a, a higher price, obviously. Um, whereas your raw time was as cheap as chips. And then they make all the sides and hay knives and everything that's in the in the top there. Would the um, transport them around, around the world? Yeah, at least you've got electric bellows. <laughs> I mean, what do you call it? Uh, well, well got, been got the old got the old bellows there. <laughs> yeah. Again, there woodwormy, the Maris have been living. Yeah, there. yeah. The old blower there, that's an old free free phase blower, and up until last year that was working, but it started to get yeah. noisier and noisier and noisier. It's gonna blow itself yeah, it up. Gone in so, so I've um, yeah, bearings are gone, there's fans are coming out. So I have gone on to the tube. Can I just film the bellows? Because <coughs> yeah, cool I've worked it. some bellows we, 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 for uh, um, we were doing Something similar on Wicker Man Kilfoot, because um, there's a 9 inch fort up here. Yeah. And uh, we used to do some cobble light up the hill and take kids up here. And uh, I've done a bit of this and all. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, 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 did, you, did you do it? They, did they make steel up there? Did you have a big chimney? We were, we were taking, well, we were we were making a zone um, like furnace uh, yeah. uh, 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 clay, uh, uh, clay, clay bricks clay, yeah well not uh, uh, yeah uh, straw and yeah. what do you call it and uh, putting a and we took an anvil up there which that weren't the easiest thing to do because they're absolutely right weight aren't they they're, they're, they're not but um yeah and then yeah. and but we were taking we we were just um working do you know as them old spikes what from road signs and that we were making um like chains and things like that, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Just just to show kids, because yeah. it does at night all. and they see all the sparks coming up and all, yeah. and, and, and obviously you work it bellows and it's pumping all the sparks up. And it just shows how it. much work went into oh, yeah. forming a small piece of iron. Yeah. Um, and it, it wouldn't be a consistent carbon content. Like I say, I, I were literally work, work it bellows by hand and. Um, to, obviously, you, you can't stop, can you? You've no. got to keep it going. No. But otherwise, it cools down. It, like it could be six hours doing that. Yeah. Well, I couldn't do six hours. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I no. I need about half an hour, and that's it. I needed a break. Yeah, pass over to somebody yeah, else. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it, it's good understanding how how hard it was to produce yeah. the steel. You know, and then you you, you can't see that steel wasn't wasn't guaranteed. Yeah. Um, we, I mean, we took some. Um, some just some normal ore up and that, and, and breaking up. It should show kids yeah. that what it, what it come from. Yeah, it come from bricks. Charcoal, iron yeah. ore, charcoal, iron ore. Keep it going. Yeah. Um, Roger from the university used to do. Well, that's why I did it with Roger, Roger Dunan. Yeah. That's yeah. what. That's why I was. I was. It was me and Roger who were doing it. Yeah. Like that's all. Yeah, he's been down here. In fact, round the corner, yeah. round this building, you'll see one of the old chimneys that he used to use for. It's just short like that. Just a small, a small smelting yeah. chimney. Um, but no, it's all good stuff. It's all. And he, he, did you see that one? Did you ever see that one? What he made out of um, a bike, pedal bike? No. <laughs> he did. He did some bellows out of a pedal bike. No, well, why not? <laughs> it worked. It worked. It was for um, do you know, when they had um, the cycling thingy for Sheffield. Yes. When we had, when, yeah. when we had that. Yeah. Um, um, it was the oh yeah whatever it was the big cycle yeah was. yeah yeah but yeah that's my that's what I'm using now bounce castle blower into a box got a sliding top there to release the pressure yeah um, and just close it up and then you know full pressure on so simple nothing can go wrong with that now yeah. apart from a family of mice can live in it <laughs> they, they go all day don't they them um, bouncy castle blowers oh my goodness yeah yeah they they're a good bit of kit. Um, you can use them for all sorts of things, not just bouncing castles, but the, the forge. If you if you got a big spillage in your carpet, yeah. you just get one of them in the room, <laughs> and it just dries everything out. Yeah. You know, the, the 
and on a, on a, a seriously hot day, they make a good. Um, if you can blow them around the with couple bottles or ice, the humidifier. Oh, 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 you've yeah, got yeah. your own air yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Would they have been done like on a treadle then? Would you have done them by foot? They'd have probably been on that handle there, and yeah. then rigged up with a pipe coming out about there. Because you, you should. So you'd have been yeah. like this. The double action bellows are like there's two compartments. Oh, so you would pull down. So, so when you pull, yeah, you'd have pulled down on that. Yeah. And then you would have got a blow, and then. Normally they'd have a heavy weight, so you, I think you pull down like a the, the, so the middle goes up and yeah. blows, yeah. and then there's a weight on it, and then that would come down automatically, so you get a blow on each stroke, as it were, yeah. so double action. Yeah. Now I've made up single action bellows with a little flat valve on them, and I've made some Japanese, well, a copy of, of a Japanese box bellow, which basically you make a plywood tube big piston with a flat valve inside the piston and you're just going like that all the time but it's it's because you imagine it's hard. i don't know why but you imagine like uh doing it with your legs because you think that your legs is the biggest yeah, well, muscle, you, you know if you were just yeah the chain or a strap on there yeah. and you just you're you know, more in control here i suppose wouldn't you if you and then straight in and, and do your stuff or get your get your apprentice to do it yeah that's the easiest job <laughs> Get the apprentice on That's fascinating, isn't it? Well, look, we won't keep you anyway. We're gonna, we're gonna go around like. But I'm glad that there's somebody, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, cause you know, well, I'm not employed, but I've got a lease on the forge. So what I'm doing now is I've got next Saturday. I'm gonna have a clean up and then just make sure I've got everything. Next Saturday, I've got a guy coming in to make one of the, yeah, make one of the little Viking knives, and he's bringing his 14 year old in as well. So. What I'll do with that is make uh, get the boy making some hooks. Yeah. I'm making a knife with him. So, so, so you're so you're not actually here for visitors today. You just need to work your own. I, I'm just doing. Well, I'm, right, I'll, yeah. I'll engage with everybody. Shoes, I'll be talking I mean, all yeah, day, no. you know, sort of thing. <laughs> but I don't get employed by the. Uh, I might get yeah. a cup of coffee from the cafe, but that's uh, that's it. But I've got to try now. Try now. It's open. I've got to try and pull a bit of money in because my insurance is high. Yeah, my public right. I've got five million pound public liability, yeah, so yeah. that's not cheap. So it's just trying to build up, get some advertising done in here, and come in and do do some days. I've got through August. I'm doing blacksmithing up at Ely Farm, so they've got some money in to work with local young people. Um, I'm going to send out a description to the council because um, so the youth service might have a couple of days with me, and it will just be making the just making the hooks. When will you be running for that from then? From so, all of August I'll be up at Ely Farm. I think two days a week, and yeah. then there might be a couple of sessions with the council of the youth service. So what I'll do with the kids is start off with a piece of straight eight mil square bar. Yeah. <coughs> They'll taper it down, round it off, make a little scroll. Yeah. Put the bend on. Put the twist on. Flatten out. Hot punch two holes. Make sure it's all straight. Whilst it's still warm, rub it down with a bit of beeswax. To yeah. give it a bit of a, 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 it gives it a nice dark finish yeah, yeah. with the beeswax on it, <coughs> and then start another one. So if they can walk away with two, and they take books, them on with them, yeah, 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 yeah. and then oh yeah, but they're chuffed, aren't they? Make it something. Stick it on the bedroom door for their gym jams or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Stick their trainers on it, or you know, give one to granddad, and granddad will say, "Yeah, oh, <laughs> how's the made that?" I bet they love it, don't they? Because <laughs> it's they um, do. I mean, you know, they get well into it. Um, and then obviously I've got to, oh, nails coming up. Um, I've got to be careful. I don't make anything too too violent for them. So it'd be nice. Some of them, if they're trusted, they will make a little. Just to do a just a little uh, a little scroll. Yeah. Do a reverse twist. Twist it one way. Yeah. Twist it the other. <laughs> yeah, that's what we would do. Upset, upset the end, and then put a point on. So you've got a little fire. Fire poker. Fire poker sort of thing, but you can. Yeah, you've got to be careful because <laughs> some of the young people we deal with aren't, um, yeah. No, yeah, but I bet, they, I bet they feel like they've made, they've made the chief from it, you know, because they've made it from, they've, they've, they've made it from the scratch. Made it. They've all got to wear, you know, all the PPE. Let me just turn this on before we do that. Um, they've all got to wear their safety gear. And with the youth service, I might just do like a little questionnaire on what, what is everything for? You know, why do we wear safety yeah, yeah. glasses? 
Um, or process like how you got to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So th that can, you know, ideally, if they, if they let me do it, I'd do like a pre work sort of, you know, it helps with employment yeah. and interviews. Yeah. So if they can make, if they can do a few weeks in here, yeah. the lads I had in from college, they were making their own hammers, tongs. We were recycling a lot of. Um, Oh yeah, railway spring uh, railway yeah, spring clips yeah. out of the river. So yeah. a bit of magnet fishing, get half a dozen of them out, and then get them up to a thousand degrees and try and straighten them out without incinerating yeah, yeah. the fingers, heads, and everything else. But it's good spring steel. Yeah. So they can make you know we've made little strives, chisels. You might be. You know if you <laughs> knows if you get in touch with um, network rail. I'm sure they. Because there's tons of them all up. You know oh, what I mean? They clear them up. Over. Obviously, you'll not be able to go down lines, but when they clear yeah. them up. The other source of good you know, carbon steel is springs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Car springs. So, um, springs, um, leaf springs are good. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can imagine leaf springs being flat already. Yeah. So, that's old leaf spring, I think. Which one's out of that? You make some of these knives out of them then, yeah? Yeah. That's out uh, that's out this the posh stuff. But these two are made out of them. You really? watch that forge with fire? That's yeah, yeah, we were talking about that, yeah. <laughs> here's here's a pile of crap. Make yourself a <laughs> sixteen inch blade, five inch handle, knife in six hours stuff now. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. That's we should be a laugh doing it down here. Yeah. You know, um, It'd be great if you say, right, go in Grandad's old tools, grab some high carbon steel, bring it out here, and your mission is to build a, a replica of an 1830s Butcher's Bowie. That we escort, you know, we exported hundreds of thousands of, of Bowie knives to the States, Australia, Africa, all over the place. But it, it would be a laugh. It'd be a laugh to do that. The only thing is, is knives and young people at the moment aren't a good mix. No, not in this country. You quite easily mess your life up just having it on in your bag. Yeah. You know, as soon as you've got a, a, a you know, conviction for a, a knife, that's it, mate. You know, a lot of colleges won't have you. Mm. A lot of jobs won't have you. And yeah, you know, when I was in the I was in the Cubs and the Scouts, they almost forced you to have a big sheath knife. You yeah. Know, the bigger the better. Yeah. But we weren't stabbing each other. But that's what he used to do. <coughs> your granddad body used to make uh, Bowie knives, and he had a full set from a little boot knife about that big, going up to one up, flipping out. You look like that, you know, like one of them Daniel Bung type yeah, yeah, things, yeah. like stab a bear week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't want to stab a bear. <laughs> I know, but it wasn't. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and 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 I think a lot of them. I think they went to America. Yeah. With bone yeah. angles, they were. Yeah, yeah. Most of them. Uh, but like I say, just through the actions of. You know, some disturbed individuals. We've gone knife crazy. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh my God, knives. Can't do it. But um, you know, it might change in years to come. Um, I can't see it. I don't know. I don't know. I can't see it. Anyway, listen, it's been fascinating to talk to you. What's your name? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Can I right. check your hand? Cheers, no, yeah, no, yeah. no, it's COVID. Yeah. Thing, yeah. Right, but well, I've just, I've just, just disinfected my hand. Yeah. <laughs> This environment isn't good for viruses and bacteria. No, anyway. no. High sulfur, thousand degree heat. So where were you filming for? Is it a little project? To I was just gonna stick it on YouTube or something. Try to get it, edit it to make some. Yeah. You know what I mean? Try to just show what, because like I say, I come here when I was a kid and uh, it, it is fascinating. I used to do play schemes years ago, mid eighties. After I got made redundant from the forge, really, in the mid 80s, late 80s, uh, I got a, where well, it was the community program scheme, everybody were unemployed, um, and you'd get three days a week work for a union rate, still open for your benefits and whatnot. Mm. So we were working in the community, working with animals, doing a summer play scheme. So every, <coughs> every year I'd be putting the time table together for the six week play scheme, and we'd have three or four trips down here. I think that's so when we come down in play schemes or something. Yeah, I used to bring sort of 30 odd kids from 
you know, council estate down. Uh, that, and that's up in their rooms. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And just, uh, it was a big game of Tiggy. You're not really there. Yeah. You know, we just had a big game well, of Tiggy. I can, I can right. remember coming down here, we were from Flower State, and that looked oh, like right. S5, it's like a poor, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, area, yeah, we were deprived area. S2, um, yeah. Ely City Farm Play Scheme. Um, so it used to come down all the time, and it's nice that I've come full, full circle, you know. Yeah. So I've now got a lease on this place. But like I said, now I need to get some get some money in and uh, get some courses done. Right, we'll get off then. Let you get let you good. let you get best out of your time in it. <laughs> yeah, well, it's <laughs> Sunday. I'm just chilling out, just reworking these. Like I say, just seeing how how far I can spread these old blades. So that's that's about. I probably get it a bit thinner, but. Um, you've got to grind it flat. So that. See, really they look like shear size to me. Knows when they used to do shears. Yeah. With, with spring yeah. on end. Yeah. So yeah. almost like um, that sort of. In thing. fact, they still they still making them. Up, uh, um, Mailing bridge. They, they used to have a. So the, you can like see the, the. You know, this is. For sand shears, they still use them, don't they? For. Yeah, well, I've used them sheep. before, shearing sheep and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. It's an ass. Yeah. Shearing the sheep by. But I mean, there's places clean, where you just don't got know, electricity. Cutting, cutting chunks out of them. You haven't got electricity, so they still actually yeah. sell them. And a lot of time when you're dagging, you you before they um, give birth, you're meant to snip all the hair around their ass. Yeah. Because you get a lot of uh, flies and whatnot. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop fly strikes. Yeah, so you're snipping yeah. them around. You give them like a a, a Brazilian. Well, you can see where the, the the development of the scissors came in. Yeah, of course. You know, you put a rivet in there, and you've got you know obviously making both the same, but you know. It's just where it pivots in it, yeah. So, like I say, I'm just spreading the blades that way. So, cross peen. So, you know, get it off, and then you, you, as soon as you hit there, it's spreading it out both yeah. ways. So, just seeing how far I can. And, 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 and you leave, you, you'll obviously you'd leave a sort of thick edge up. A yeah, thick well, edge up you go around with the cross peen, and then, you know, flatten it off. Yeah. And it will widen it out. So that was virtually the same width as that. But there's plenty of material at the back to squish it out. Yeah. Mm. Um, I'll grind it up and see what it looks like. But if I can make something that you can use as a, as a, you know, as a little kitchen knife. Oh, people love it, aren't they? they yeah. love, uh, and they'll, they'll use that all the time. You know, I, I've, I've got a couple now that I'm using out of different steels. Um, and it, it, it's, it's great. You know, you're actually using things you can make. It's very good how you get that consistency in. in yeah, there's a lot of grinding in there. Yeah. But, um, you know, that's the sort of, that's the finish you'll get. Just, that's a forged finish. Yeah. Um, you know, what I'll do is get home and realise it's a bit twisted or bent or something. Because sometimes in the forge, you, you you know, you're trying to look down at it. Am I straight? You know, is the blade straight? Well, there's a little curve on that one. But yeah. then sometimes it's the, it's the different thicknesses that are taking your eye off. You have a little pot of water, what you treat it in after. What I'll do is is forge it. Yeah. So that's me finished forge. So now I'll grind it. I'll grind all the saw, all the sides smooth. 